Yes, class. Is this audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Good evening, ma'am. Oh, good. Evening. So, see, we had completed the first chapter of electrostatics, electric field, and charges. Now, see, after completion of electric charges and field, we have the second chapter that is electric potential and capacitance. Now, before we begin with the chapter, let's just do a quick revision of calculus, which you have already studied in your eleventh standard, and all the math students are also aware of it. Now, see. in calculus we will be just discussing the basics of integration and differentiation because in your potential chapter means in this chapter the chapter that we are going to start in this chapter this is a lot this is utilized a lot your calculus means both your differentiation as well as your integration so we'll just do a quick revision of differentiation because without this you won't be able to solve the numericals or even you won't be able to do the derivations of work done and all so we'll be discussing differentiation and integration quickly so let's first discuss differentiation now see in layman terms if i have to explain you what is meant by differentiation then differentiation will be used when you have a greater part and you want to calculate a very small segment of it then you will be using differentiation so how do we use differentiation basically in case of differentiation you have change in dependent variable with respect to what with respect to the independent variable with respect to the independent variable so you have to calculate change now as in if you have let's say dy over dx so if you are given like this a situation where it is written dy over dx so this means that you are differentiating by differentiate by with respect to x you are differentiating by with respect to x that's how that's the case when you write dy over dx now if you have a polynomial function general case of differentiation when you have a polynomial function so let's say y is equal to some x to the power n now i want to differentiate this y so on differentiation we write in this manner differentiation is done in this manner dy over dx now what is the value of y according to the question value of y is x to the power n so this becomes d over dx now you put the value of y that you have that is x to the power n now see as per the rules of integration what happens a differentiation what happens whatever is the power of the x that will come out and get multiplied by the whole term now to the x which is left x to the power n is left no so this gets subtracted by n x to the power n minus 1 this becomes like this so if we take an example of it if we take an example like x square y is equal to x square a very basic example of it so dy over dx will be what instead of y you will be writing x square so it will be dx square by dx you are differentiating by with respect to x now see 2 is the constant means it's the power so it will come out so instead of n in this example we are having 2 x to the power 2 subtract 1 minus 1 so you get 2x to the power when that is 2x or if i give you another example x to the power 5 by y is equal to this is also very example for all of you so dy over dx which will be dx to the power 5 by 2 so this will be in this manner now see 5 by 2 is the constant that will come out now x will be left by 5 by 2 minus 1 so you have 5 by 2 x to the power 5 minus 2 will be 3 3 by 2 this becomes 3 by 2 so you will be having simple cases only in this chapter 
Now see, let's discuss few properties of differentiation as well. Properties of differentiation. So first property is if you have a constant with you, when you have a constant function with you. If you have a constant function, let's say y is equal to capital K, you have this function with you. Now see in this case, when you have such a case, y is equal to K and K is a constant, this K is a constant. So if you differentiate it, this D capital K over DX, let's suppose we are differentiating dy by dx so dk by dx this will be zero so like you have example your y is three so no need to differentiate it if it's a constant then directly dy over dx will be zero means d3 over dx is zero now see if you take the product of the constant function and a variable function if you take the product of constant and variable function. Means you have both the cases. Now see in this what will happen, like if you have a function y is equal to k and function of x. All right, if you have such a case. Now see how will you differentiate it? Firstly, you will write dy over dx if you have to differentiate y with respect to x. Now see, it will be d k f x by dx. I have written just the value of y that has been provided by the question. Now see, since k is a constant, all the constant terms will come out first. So k is the constant, I have brought it up. Now whatever is the function left, differentiate it the way you differentiate means let the function be x square then you will get 2x x cube 3x square whatever is the function the way you differentiate it it's just that your constant term will get multiplied by the whole term constant will come up like i'll give you an example for the second case for the second case let's take it as 2x square all right, so when you will differentiate y is equal to dy over dx, this will be d2x square by dx. Now see constant is 2, so 2 will come out. Now what is left? x to the power 2. So this 2 that is in the power, that will also come out. x will be left with 2 minus 1, which becomes 1. So your answer is Also, let's let's do a question together then. Or let me give you a question. 3 by x squared. This is your function. y is equal to 3 by x squared. So till the time, first you note down all this. Then do that example by yourself. Then we'll discuss.
So submit your answer for this example. Y is equal to three by x square. All right, let's discuss it now. This was a very small example. So by now, most of you should have submitted. Only three students have answered. Out of them, Atif and Akifa both are correct. Krishna, there's a very slight mistake in your answer. C, y is equal to what? Y is equal to 3 by x squared. So we can write y as 3x to the power minus 2 x will go on the on the numerator side so power sign will get reversed now see dy over dx means 3x to the power minus 2 we are differentiating this now now see constant will come out first whatever is the constant take it out now what's the power power also comes out power is minus 2 x to the power minus 2 is left what do you do you subtract minus fr 1 from it this view subtract minus one from it. So this term, this is what? Three into minus two x to the power minus three, which makes it minus six x to the power minus three. All right, this was the solution of this. Now see, okay, one more property before we discuss integration portion. One more property is that the property of addition or subtraction, this property also. So, if you have addition or subtraction with you. Now see, if you take a random example like x cube plus x square plus x, this, are, these are, this is a random example. Now how do you differentiate it? So what do you do? You know how to differentiate individual quantities. So whatever are the individual quantities in between these plus and minus signs, differentiate them the way they are differentiated and just at the end, add them. Like if I give you this example and you have to differentiate this, y is equal to x cubed plus x squared plus x. So you have to make it dy over dx. So this will be equal to differentiation of x cubed plus differentiation of x squared plus differentiation of dx. Now see, differentiation of x cubed is what? Try to do it orally only. Three comes out x to the power 3 minus 1 makes it x to the power 2. So this is 3. x to the power what? 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Plus the constant 2 will come out. x to the power 2 minus 1 means 1. And dx over dx makes it 1. So your dy over dx will be in this manner. Similarly, let's take one more example just for this part. Let's take one more example. Let's take a random example for this one as well. Y is equal to, this was x cubed, no, x cubed, x square x. So let's take it as 2x cubed plus 3x square plus 2x. Let's take it in this one. 
Now see again, you know how to differentiate all the individual quantities. So differentiate it the way you do it for individual one. Like if you have to differentiate dy over dx. Understand this carefully because this addition and subtraction concept will be used when we'll be relating electric field and potential. So there's a relation that involves differentiation. So now if you differentiate this, now you have to differentiate each term individually. It means 2x cubed by dx plus d3x squared by dx plus d2x by dx. So if you differentiate this, dy over dx will be what? 3 comes out because it's the power. 2 is already a constant. So 2 gets multiplied by 3. That makes it 6. Try to do it orally. So 6. Now x to the power 3. x to the power 3 minus 1 makes it x to the power 2. You have to do it very quickly. 2x to the power cube. 2 multiplied by the 3 gives 6 x to the power 3 minus 1 gives x to the power 2. Similarly, 3 gets multiplied with this 2, makes it 6 again. x to the power 2 minus 1, that is 1 only. Plus, this is d differentiation of 2x. So in case of differentiation of 2x, see 2 is the constant that will come out. What will be left? dx over dx will be left. So that will be one. So that's why you have to. So if you have subtraction and addition sets between within those plus and minus sign, solve it the way you differentiate it. And then ultimately at the end add them. So in questions you must be given, you might be given values of x. So you can put it at the end and add all those values. Supposedly x is equal to one. You have to calculate potential at x is equal to one. So just put x is equal to one that will be 14 for this case. So this way you will be solving it. All right. So just note it down. Then we'll quickly do a recap of integration as well. And this solution, note down the solution for the above one also. Those who haven't. Teacher, can you scroll up, please? Yeah, sure. Only this portion, Fatima, or this one also? It's only this one. Completed? Yes, teacher. Right. So this was the uh, brief of 
differentiation that will be sufficient for you rest of the terms you can revise it now let's just quickly just discuss integration as well because integration will also be utilized in fact integration will be utilized in today's class only now see just contrary to differentiation it's the inverse operation of differentiation so if you have the smaller part and you wish to expand it through the entire length or whatever you have then you use difference integration in case of differentiation what did we do we had the whole larger part with us and we wish to calculate about the smallest infinitesimal small element in case of integration we have the smallest element with us now we have to expand it to know about the entire length of it now if you have a general polynomial function let's discuss that only if you have a general polynomial functions means you are differentiating x to the power n dx limits are from x1 to x2 now see when you differentiate it x to the power n just add 1 to the power and whatever the power becomes now divide it divide the whole term by and then put your limits x1 to x2 so 1 by n plus 1 will come out because this term is a constant now what you do whatever is the upper limit take it x to the power 2 and whatever is the power that has come put it over here n plus 1 Minus lower limit x to the power one, uh, x one to the power whatever you have n plus one. So this is how you differentiate it. So let's do it with the help of any example only. If I give you an example x square dx from one to two, a very basic example. Now see x to the power two plus one. Divided by the whole power term means two plus one. From where? From one to two. So this whole term will come out because it's a constant. That is one by three will come out, and I am left with x to the power three from limits from one to two. Now, as usual, I have to put up the upper limit first along with the power of x. Means two. What is the power of x? Three. So two cube. Minus lower limit, whatever is the power of x, one cube. So this becomes, this is eight minus one, that is seven by three. This becomes eight minus one, seven by three. So if integration is clear to all of you, we can do one practicing question. So you should submit your answer of it. Um. Okay, four x cube dx and integrate it from one to two. So first, note down this part. The above part you have already written. Just note down this integration part and try to solve that example and submit your answers. Because general formula based, instead of n you have I think three and the constant you have that is extra. That will also help in your calculation.
Okay, so Krishna has already submitted the answer. The rest of you, please try. This is not a tough one. You will, you will get the answer very easily. The powers will get cancelled only. Okay, Krishna, Akifa, both of you have got the correct answer. Atif also. All right, let's discuss it then. Now see, you have 4x cubed dx. Now what you have to do, you have to integrate it from 1 to 2. So 4 is a constant that will directly come out whenever you have integration or differentiation, constant comes out first. Now you have to integrate x to the power 3 dx from where? From 1 to 2. Rest of you who are getting confused, please look at the solution carefully. 4 because this is the simplest one you will get questions more complex than this now see x to the power 3 as i've told you power gets added by 1 so if you have it as x to the power 3 yes cool so now your answer is correct x to the power 3 so add 1 to it and whatever the power you are getting this becomes this goes in the denominator to the power whatever are your limits 1 to 2 so 4 was already the constant. This 4 came out. 3 plus 1 became 4. What is left? 3 plus 1 is 4. So you have x to the power 4 limits from 1 to 2. 4, 4 will already get cancelled. 2 means your upper limit to the power of whatever is the power of x. 2. What is the power of x? 4. So 2 to the power 4 minus lower limit. What is the power of x to the power 4? So this is 16, 16, and this is 1. So yes, your answer is 15. Clear to all of you? Yes, Rishan. Yes, ma'am. Hamza Shekhani. Then you were absent past week, no? Both the classes you have missed, I think. All right, just note it down and text me when you are done. Then we'll begin with potential now.
ओके फातिमा आई रिपीट आई रिपीट जस्ट गिव टू मिनट्स आई रिपीट Okay, now see all those who are having confusion in differentiation and integration. See, in case of differentiation, remember this rule: whatever is x to the power n, if you are differentiating it, the power comes out. Means get comes out means it gets multiplied. X to the power n was left over here. X to the power n was there. This power gets subtracted by one. If you have constant, like if you had two x to the power n, so along with this you will be multiplying the whole term with two. For example, we had y is equal to two x to the power two. This is the constant that we had two. Constants will be will or will also be get uh, will be getting separated. So you had two. Two was the constant. Now see, Fatima, you tell me. What is the power of x in this example? Two. Two. So whatever is the power, no, just take it out. This was because this two was a constant. This is this two, and this power two is this. Now see, x to the power two was the number, the digit that we had, the dependent variable. You have to subtract one from here. So what are we left with? Two multiplied by two makes it four. X to the power two minus one is what? It is one. one. So this is how you get four x. Or if we take another example, y is equal to three x to the power minus two. When we were considering this example. So see, y is equal to three x to the power minus two. Fatima, tell me what is the constant here? Three. Three is the constant. So when I am differentiating dy over dx, this three will come out because it's a constant. Now I have to differentiate x to the power minus two. So what is the power of x? Minus two. So bring minus two ahead. Means multiply minus two. Now what is left? X to the power minus two. Two minus minus two minus one. Minus two minus one. Now simply multiply everything what you have. Three into minus two gives minus six. X to the power minus three. 
clear fatma and rest of you yes teacher thank you okay now see in case of integration integration what happens if this is your case x to the power n dx so mm -hmm. this n plus 1 you make the power instead the way we were writing no n to the power n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 in case of integration whatever is the power add 1 to it now you will get n to n plus 1 something put it in the denominator for example you had x to the power 2 dx so x to the power 2 plus 1 now what i am get what am i getting in the Uh, power of x i am getting 2 plus 1 so make it as the denominator if you have any constant with you like the way we had taken 4x cube so 4 will come out 4 will get multiplied 2 will get multiplied whatever is the constant will get multiplied if you have a constant in this example we didn't have any constant so now see x to the power 2 plus 1 becomes 3 And two plus one is three. Also, now see x cube. This is not our answer. Why? Because we have certain limits. We have to put these limits from one to two. Now what we do? One by three is a constant, so it will come out. One by three is a uh, is a constant, so it will get multiplied. You don't need to solve it. Now x to the power three limits from one to two. What is the upper limit, Fatima? In this case. Two, two. So whatever is the power of x that you have got by adding this, put the power of upper limit as well. So this becomes two cube. Then put minus sign, and instead of taking the upper limit the way you had taken the upper limit, Why take it the negative sign. Yes. Why minus sign? Minus sign. This is the rule of integration. This is the rule of integration. You have to put minus sign only. Don't add it. Don't take plus sign. Okay. These are. This is the rule of integration. This is how you solve it. X to the x two to the power n plus one minus x one to the power n plus one. So this way, this will be eight minus one by three. That will be seven by three or whatever. All right. So. all those who are getting confused so practice your integration and differentiation you must have done it in standard 11 so wherever you get confused ask me in the next class now is it clear yes teacher thank you very much okay now let's discuss electric potential now okay electric potential is similar to what you have studied regarding work done Work done. If you remember, if you are able to recall, what was the formula of work done? Force into distance. Force into distance or displacement. Oh yeah, displacement. Displacement. So work done is the dot product of force and displacement, F S, or you can write it as F S cos theta. Mm -hmm. Dot product we have already discussed when we were discussing electric flux. No, now see. Work done. This is valid for a force which is constant. This is valid for a constant force. If you have a variable force, force depends on some value of x or something. So the integration that you have studied that will help. Let's say dx is the dis small displacement which has to be expanded. So f dot dx integration from x one to x two. This is. When you have a variable force, okay. Now regarding the concept of electric potential, you can relate it to electric field. Some things you will find contrary to it. Some things you will find relatable to it. Now see, if I have a charge plus Q, this is a plus Q charge, and it's the stationary source charge. So let me name it as source charge. so this source charge will be producing its electric field that's what we have studied in electric field the single charge produces uh, the single charge has a definite space around itself where electrical phenomena can be experienced that space is known as electric field now what do i do i have taken a point a this is some random point a and at infinity this is infinity i have a charge small q this is my test charge in this case this becomes my test charge now see if i bring this small q from infinity to this point a 
some work then will be required to bring up this charge from infinity to a particular point a some amount of work done will be required now see that work done in bringing this charge small q charge this test charge from where from infinity to a point that i have chosen to a particular point this work done gets or we call this work done as potential or electric potential since it's for a for an electric charge we call it as electric potential so similarly to electric field the way electric field was a property of a single charge electric potential is also a property of single charge electric force was property of two charges minimum you require two charges to exert force on each other but in case of electric field if you have a single charge with you that will exert its own electric field similarly potential single charge will have be having certain potential around itself so electric potential and electric field both of these both of these you are require you require only a single charge now see the difference that potential is electric potential it differs from electric field and electric force also but mainly by electric field that it is the electrical property around the charge in scalar form you had electric field around the charge as well but that was vectorically electric potential is a scalar quantity so if electric potential is a scalar quantity do i need to find out its direction all the time no ma'am no scalar quantities yes no directions are not required so it means one of your work gets easier now in case of electric field you had to take out direction of every electric field for a particular charge then you had to apply superposition principle and finally find out what is the net resultant electric field in case of electric potential it is a scalar quantity you just add it directly algebraically the way you add it so what is potential electric potential this is defined as the work done in carrying a unit positive test charge i'll show you how by a unit positive test charge from infinity to a particular point from infinity if i'm bringing it to a particular point this whole work done is known as electric potential so let me write down few things then only it will be clear so work done we have revised work done is now see this it defines electrical properties around a charge but in which form in scalar form in scalar form means electrical properties will be executed around the charge it's just that you are not concerned with the direction now you are only concerned with the magnitude and it is a property of a single charge it is a property of a single charge so if you even if you have a single charge that will be having its potential like if you have a single charge you won't be having electric force for exertion of electric force you require something some other charge that will be now see if you had the source charge plus q and you have the small charge test charge is a small q so see the work done in carrying the test charge from infinity to that particular point we have called this as voltage for what for that test charge this is the definition work done in carrying a test charge from infinity to a particular point a, a is a random point i am taking that is the definition of voltage now see if v not v if q is taken as plus 1 coulomb then only i will say no work done is equal to the potential so that's why potential is what you can even remember the definition right now only see electric potential let me write the definition
electric potential so try to remember in the class only electric potential is the work done it is the work done in carrying what in carrying this q is equal to plus 1 coulombs means unit positive test charge electric potential is work done in carrying unit positive test charge from where from infinity from infinity to a a means what to a particular point to that point infinity to that point against electric field now see as already i have told you we are studying electrostatics so charges will not move but for moving this q charge from infinity to this point we are actually not moving this motion is not signifying electric potential electric potential is basically the work done so we are concerned with the work done only that's why we there should be no acceleration produced and without acceleration so finally you have to remember this work done is what this is v means the potential by charge so what will be the potential v will be work done multiplied by charge no i have written the opposite work done is carrying charge now see charge multiplied by potential work done per unit charge no so here it will be work done per unit charge because we are calculating potential work done we know so it's work done for this charge no so not q won't come in this side q will be work done for carrying this charge from infinity to point a so work done for this charge test charge so just note down this make this correction now see so work done will be what work done will be charge multiplied by potential why potential is what potential is work done by charge so mainly these formulas will get utilized so electric potential is a scalar quantity or a vector quantity scalar quantity scalar quantity this is a scalar quantity okay huzefa you tell me the si unit of voltage potential yes huzefa the formula is this work done per unit charge volt is one of the units volt is one of the si unit yes fatima is it joule per coulomb joule per coulomb both are correct huzefa fatima both are correct see work done is joule per unit charge is coulomb this is also called as volt so 1 joules per coulomb is equal to 1 volt so 1 volt also you can use 1 joules per coulomb also you can use all right so just note till here then we'll find out what is electric potential due to a single charge point charge the way we have calculated it for electric field
done? Yes, teacher. Okay. So let us calculate electric potential for a point charge. So what was electric field for a point charge? Electric field for a point charge. K Q one Q two by R square. K Q one Q two by R square is the electric force, Krishna. K Q two by R square. Yes, sir. K Q by R square. K Q by R square. All right, Krishna, you were telling electric force, two charges. Electric field is correct, Z. That is K Q by R square. So let's see what is electric potential. So electric potential due to a point charge. So now let me put up the previous scenario back. Plus Q is the source charge. This is some point A. And let's say the separation of the source charge to this point. This is small r. All right. Now I have plus Q at infinity. And I want to bring this Q to A. Now in between what I have done, from this infinity to this point A, I have taken a small separation, a very small separation with the help of these two points. Let's name it something C. Let's name it as B. Let me take this very small distance as dx. Separation between in this small q and capital Q. Small q and capital Q, this is x. And these are the conditions I have taken. R is what? R is the separation of capital Q to this point A. X is the separation for, for capital, capital Q and small q. Small q is the test charge, which is located at infinity. And dx is a very small portion of it, which I have to expand. So, Atif, tell me, what is the force experienced by this small charge Q due to capital Q? Yes, Atif? Akifa A into small Q into capital Q over X square. Correct. K is the constant. First charge is capital Q. This another charge that you have is small Q divided by X square. This is the force that you have. So see if this is the point. Now see because of this capital Q this small q charge will be pushed away in different in the opposite direction this will be the direction of x f what will happen the external force will try to bring this charge back to point a why because we are the external force no we are trying to put the charge from infinity to that point a apart from us means this us means the external force that is acting. The other force that is present in the system is already there. Coulomb's law force is there. That is KQ, capital Q, small q by R square. So this is present. Now see, F external is what? F external is negative of F. So if you have F there, you can get F external by just taking a minus sign from it. So F external will be what? Minus capital Q small q by X square. So F external, you can take it as minus K capital Q small q by X square. This is it. Now see, we have discussed what is the formula of work done. So yes, what was the formula of work done Hamza? Ada Hamza, Hamza Shekhani, you. Yes, Hamza, what was the formula of work done? Um, the work is equal to, um, uh, yes, F Hamza, F, yes, C cross theta. Correct, correct, perfect. 
that is fd cos theta or fs cos theta whatever force multiplied by the displacement and the angle between them correct so if i have to calculate work done now i'm not calculating work done from infinity to point a. i have just taken a very small point i'll expand it from infinity to that point r i will expand it by the help of integration i can do that so let me take work done in carrying q from c to d c is what d is what just look at it again this is point c this is point d separation between them is dx so if i get the work done for it i can expand it for infinity to this point a this point a is what for from q this is r this will be infinity so from infinity to r i can expand so if if i get the value of this dx force value of the dx work done i'll be able to calculate for the rest of it now see work done is what dw will be f external dot dx this will be the simple work done so f external is what f external if you put the values of external force that you have as k q you have k capital q small q by x square this is the force that you have displacement dx let the displacement be dx only now see cos 180 will be there because first don't consider f external right now because this force is basically your main force so we are just putting this now we'll automatically get the negative sign in our answer you will see how so see displacement is in which direction look carefully displacement is occurring in this direction from c to d this is the direction of displacement and force that is already acting on the system this is in this direction both are making an angle of 180 degrees means both are anti parallel to each other so right now don't put the value of negative sign or anything you will automatically get the negative sign why because cos my cos 180 is minus 1 so if you put cos 180 you already get it as minus k capital q small q x square by dx so you have the work done with you. now work done from where from infinity to that point r now this part was here till your physics application now you have mathematics where you have to apply integration what we have studied so dw will be what k capital q small q remember constants will get multiplied k capital q small q what is left minus 1 by x square or dx by x square integration from infinity to the point r now we have to differentiate this point see how will we uh, not differentiate sorry integrate x to the power minus 2 dx what will we do x to the power minus 2 add 1 to it plus 1 whatever you get the power divide it put it in the denominator so what did we get k capital q small q put the negative sign already we have 1 minus 2 means minus 1 in the denominator and x to the power minus 1 why x to the power minus 1 because minus 2 plus 1 makes it minus 1 and don't forget to put the limits from infinity to point r is this clear fatima to you is it clear yes teacher all right now see minus minus sign will get cancelled your work done will be what k capital q small q let's put the limit or instead of writing x to the power minus 1 let us write it as 1 by x now now we have different integrated it now we know we just have to put the limits so instead of 1 by x i'll write 1 by r minus 1 by lower limit what is the lower limit infinity 1 by r minus 1 by infinity why i'm doing 1 by because r to the power minus 1 minus r minus infinity to the power minus 1 this can be written as 1 by r 1 by infinity so 1 by infinity is 0 work done is what work done is k capital q small q by r now we weren't calculating the work done what is the 
डेफिनेशन ऑफ पोटेंशियल पोटेंशियल इज वर्क डन पर यूनिट टेस्ट चार्ज सो दिस इज के कैपिटल क्यू स्मॉल क्यू बाय आर वर्क डन पर यूनिट डिस्चार्ज सो स्मॉल क्यू स्मॉल क्यू गेट्स कैंसिल्ड पोटेंशियल फॉर अ पॉइंट चार्ज कम्स आउट टू बी K Q by R, not capital R. We have taken, I think, small R. No, so let me write it in terms of small R. This is V K capital Q by small R. You can even write it in this manner. V is equal to Q by four pi epsilon naught R. This is your potential. So remember, just a method to remember. Force is what? Force is K Q square R square. If both the charges are same, K Q square R square. Electric field, one Q gets eliminated, which makes it K capital Q by R square. In case of potential, that R also get gets eliminated. Potential is simply K Q by R. So these three formula you have to remember. Clear to all of you? It's easy to remember. K Q by R. Okay. Yes, teacher. Yes. Alright. Just note it down. Then we'll do a formula-based question on this also.
so see when we had taken electric force electric field there i had told you that whenever you are using electric force or electric field you have to take the magnitude of the charge the reason was that only because it was a vector quantity it is a vector quantity so magnitude part will be sufficient why because you already have to take the direction as well in case of potential potential is a scalar quantity so if you have a charge you have to calculate potential at this point let this separation be small r v will be equal to q 4 by epsilon not small r this is k q by small r if this is a negative charge and i have to calculate it at this point only means this point this is r so i won't be taking the magnitude now whatever is a sign potential will become negative then 4 pi epsilon not r square this will come out to be minus q by 4 pi epsilon not r so this you have to remember because if even if you have various kinds of potential one is negative then it gets subtracted other one is positive it gets added all right so a very simple question let's discuss a very simple question so you have a charge minus 3 millicoulombs at a separation of 9 millimeter at this point let's say this point is p you have to calculate the potential so see this is a formula based question only how to apply this formula that we have studied v the formula of potential remember it is k q by r k is the constant q is the charge that we have r is the separation so v is equal to k q divided by r so kulsum what is the value of k that i should write instead of k Kulsum? Um, uh. K, this K has a certain value, if you remember. Okay, Fatima? 9 into 10 to the power 9. 9 into 10. Kulsum, now are you able to recall? 9 into 10. Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay. So, K is the constant. This is 9 into 10 to the power 9. All right. Okay, Hanifa, you tell me. What is the charge that I should take? It's 3. Only three, just look Mi at minus three. Not only minus three, something else. SI unit of charge is coulombs. So joules. <clears throat> no, no, see, your charge is minus three millicoulombs. So you cannot take minus three only. You have to convert millicoulombs into coulombs. All right. So minus three millicoulombs. Whenever you have to remove milli you multiply it by 10 to the power minus 3. Instead of milli, write 10 to the power minus 3. Cool. So this is now in SI unit form. Okay, and in case of these formulas, we always, always put it in terms of SI unit. So Hanifa, is this clear? Why are we writing this charge? Yes. Okay. So Q yes. is minus 3 into 10 to the power 9. Charge has also been put. Okay, Hamza, only Hamza. You tell me what is the value of R that I should write? Hamza? Um, it is 3 into 10 power 9. Uh, no, it's oh, 10 minus 3. 3. Minus 3. Yes, just minus 3. This, it will be this only, 10 to the, not this. Yes, Hamza. Nine mm. Nine mm. Correct. So, uh, can I write it as nine mm only, or should I convert it? I'm convert. So, what will it be? Nine. Nine into ten to the power. 
10 to the power milli what do we write yes hamza c 1 milli coulomb this is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 coulombs 1 millimeter this is equals to this equals to 10 to the power minus 3 meters so if you have 9 milli coulombs that will be 9 into 10 to the power minus 3 So nine nine will get cancelled. Ten to the power minus three. Ten to the power minus three will can get cancelled. Voltage will be minus three into ten to the power nine volt. So by looking at simply nine three into ten to the power minus sign, you can easily figure out that the charge must have been negative. Okay. So just note note down these these two points also. Note this one also. Make a note. Put these two points as well, and then note down the question. And try to solve the question yourself. Wherever you get stuck, then look at the screen for the solution. First, try to solve it. Wherever you get stuck and are not able to understand, then ask. This was just formula based. Okay.
done? Yes. Oh. Now see, when we were discussing electric field, electric forces, there, what did we do? We, if we had various charges like Q1, Q2, up till Qn, these many charges were there. Then at a point, if we had to calculate, what did we do? We first took out the direction and then we used superposition principle to calculate electric fields or force due to a number of charges. Now see, if this separation is R1, potential will be what? V1 will be Q1 by K, Q1 by R1. If this separation is R2, V2 will be what? K, Q2 by R2. If this separation is Rn, Vn will be what? K, Qn by Rn. Whatever you charge have, whatever is the separation of the charge to the point, take the separation that I've taken it as R. Now you just have to add them algebraically v net will be what v1 plus v2 up till how many are given up till vn so if you have n interacting point charges if you have n interacting point charges then your net potential this is given by algebraic sum of individual charges. Algebraic sum of potential due to individual charges. Algebraic sum of potential due to individual charges. due to individual charges. So you are not now supposed to calculate it vectorically, just add it. If it is plus one voltage, minus two voltage, your resultant voltage will be minus one voltage. You are not concerned with anything, simply add it. That makes your calculation easier. This is easier than electric field. Uh, one more thing, just one point, uh, we'll do some questions on this work done. So before we do questions of work done, remember, if this is one point A, this is one point B, work done in carrying this charge, small q, I have a charge small q, in carrying this charge small q from point A to point B, I have this A to B. Now work done, work done in carrying this charge, from A to B. This is given by charge multiplied by the potential difference. How do you take the difference? Final potential minus the initial potential. One point, this is note number one that you have to remember because this gets used. The second point that you have to remember, this is work done by the external force. No, we are trying to bring the charge back from infinity to a point or from one point to another. That's the external force doing. So work done by the external force, this is equal to negative of work done by the electric field. 
so if you get a question where you have to find out work done by electric field then do it or just answer it the way you have been doing just add a minus sign to represent that it's the work done by electric field and if you are given value of work done by electric field then simply put a negative sign and get the value okay so note it down i'm giving you questions as well we'll practice at least two to three questions today see how we solve these kinds of question you have to calculate work done by the external force in carrying electron from a to b as i have told you potential difference final potential means vb minus initial potential charge is moved from a to b this is initial this is final vb minus initial va multiplied by the charge gives you the work done in carrying charge from point a to b this is how we calculate potential multiplied by charge gives you the work done now vb is given to you as minus 20 volts minus this sign and va is given to you as plus 10 volts what is the value of q that i should take 1.6 into 10 to minus 
Correct answer. Perfect. See, you have electron with you. Question has not mentioned you the charge of the particle, but question has mentioned you the name of the particle, and you are already aware of if you have the particle as electron, then the charge on an electron is what? 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Now, since it's a negative charge, put minus. This is equal to work done by AP. So this is what? This is minus 30 multiplied by minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. This is work done by AB. So this will be what? Uh, 3 into 1.6. This will be 4.8. And minus minus will become plus only. 110 will get eliminated. So it will be 10 to the power minus 18. SI unit of work done is joules. So this will be your final answer. Work done by A. Okay. So I'm give now this question I have solved. The other question I'm giving you, which is similar to this one. So if you have understood this question, all of you should be able to answer that. So note this one, and I'm giving you a second one. Yes, quickly note down the solution of first one and send me the answers for the second one. Just based on this, a very slight change. At least you all should try. So Atifa has submitted his answer also, and that is correct. Okay, Atifa has also submitted. The rest of you also, please try this question. This is very easy. Fatima, very slight error. Both the Fatima. Fatima Munir as well as Fatima. Both of you. Just very, a very slight error. Just check. Krishna, your answer is correct. Zed, you also submit. Kulsum, Huzefa, Hiba, Hamza, you submit. Both the Hamza. The way we have done the previous question, it will be done in this manner, just a very slight change. See, in the first question, it has asked us to calculate work done by external force. In the second question, it is asking you to calculate work done by electric field. Hamza, Hamza Shekhani, you try. 
Hiba, Huzefa, Kulsum, Zed. Okay, so Hamza has also submitted his answer. Let's discuss it then. I think no more answers are coming. See, work done by electric force in carrying charge to Coulomb from point A to point B. All right. Now see, from point A to B means from this point to this point. So what is your final potential? V A or V B? V A or V B? V B. V B. Okay, so change in potential will be what? V B minus V A from A to B, we are moving VB minus VA multiplied by the charge. This is equal to the work done by the external force. This is work done by the external force. So VB, VB is given to us as 15 coulombs minus VA is given to us as five not sorry coulombs i mean voltage 15 volt minus 5 volt z what is the charge that i should take uh it's uh, 2 coulombs so 3.6 into 10 to power minus 19 <clears throat> 2 coulombs just 2 coulombs okay this is the work done by the external force so 15 minus 5 gives us what 10 10 multiplied by 2, this is the work done by external. So, work done by the external force is 20. Okay, Hamza, you tell me what is the relationship between work done by external force and work done by electric field? Hamza. Yes, Hamza. Look into your no notes. Just now you have written it down. I have made you write two points. There's a relationship between work done by external force and work done by electric field. Yes, Fatima. You have to make it negative. Negative. So this is the work done by external force. This is coming out to be 20 joules. Work done by the electric field. This will be minus 20 joules. Clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. So note down the solution as well.
See, this is a square given to you with sides A plus E is kept. Let's name these corners at A, this point as B, this point as C, this point as D. Four corners of a square with the side A plus E minus E plus 2E minus 2E. You have three questions with you. Firstly, you have to find out potential at the center point O. Secondly, you have to find out the potential at this point E. And ultimately, you have to find out what is the work done in carrying proton from O to E. If you move from O to E, how do you calculate the work done? So regarding the first part, potential at point O. See, whenever you are calculating potential from a point, take out the separation between this, these two points. We don't know what is AO. So see, if you look at this triangle carefully, this is A point, this point is C, this point is B. AB is given what? AB is given A. BC is given what? BC is also given as A. So see, this side will be what? This will be root 2A using Pythagoras theorem. But we require half of it, means at point AO. So AO, which is equal to BO, which is equal to this point CO, which is equal to this DO, all these are half of root 2A by 2, which we can write it as A by root, A divided by root. Now see how to use potential. Remember, we are calculating VA. So remember the general formula for potential. General formula of potential is KQ by R. General formula of potential is KQ by R. For VA, K will be the same. Q will be what? Charge at A. Charge at A is plus E divided by separation of the charge to the point which we are calculating. Means A by root 2. This is VA. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Any doubts how to how to write this VA? Because others will be based on this only. Clear? Ma'am, could you repeat it again? Okay, okay. I'm repeating. See, VA is what? Let me rewrite it. This separation is root 2a because of Pythagoras theorem. So half of root 2a becomes a by root 2. So this is a by root 2. All right. Now I am calculating potential at point O because of this charge plus E. So general formula of potential is what? KQ by R. So K is the constant. So Krishna, tell me, if K is the constant at point O because of this point A. What is the charge that is participating? Uh, plus E. Plus E is participating. So it means we have the Q as E divided by. Now the separation from the charge to that point with which we are calculating. The separation is what? A by root. A by root. So that's how we get A by root 2. Now clear? Yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Now VB. Again, this logic will remain the same. Constant K will come. Now, once the constant K comes, we have to find out the charge. Now see, what charge will be there for B? Which charge is there at point B? Minus E. Minus E. So minus of E and the separation BO is also A by root 2. VC. VC constant is K. Charge is 2E. Separation CO is what? CO is A by root 2. VD. Constant K. Charge at D point is minus 2. So minus 2E. Because minus sign we have to consider. Divided by A by root 2. DO will also be A by root 2. These are all the values of potential that we have. Alright. Now the net potential as I have told you. You just have to add this. 
नेट पोटेंशियल विल बी वॉट वी ए प्लस वी बी प्लस वी सी प्लस वी डी सो वी ए इज वॉट के ई ए बाय रूट टू वी बी इज वॉट माइनस के ई ए बाय रूट टू वी सी इज वॉट प्लस के टू ई ए बाय रूट टू वी डी इज वॉट माइनस के टू ई बाय ए बाय this cancel this this gets subtracted from this v at the center o comes out to be zero in this case clear to each one of you okay yes ma'am yes okay so just uh, note down till here we'll stop here today we'll just do the first part all of you try the second and third part at your home after the class we'll discuss it in the next class okay ma'am we need some miracles some based on this you may you will get the assignments there yeah? okay okay so i hope all of you are getting your assignments regularly after the classes yes ma'am so if you are having any issues with the assignment just let me know or if you have doubts in your assignment then also you can share it yes all right all of you have done yes, yes 